I'm super excited, guys. We got my son his first very own kid-friendly electric bike, but shh, he doesn't know yet. All right, guys, so I'm gonna try to disguise this box, and when my son gets home, I'm gonna have him help me do the unboxing. He has no idea he's getting this bike. He does know about the bike, and he's been wanting one, so I'm really excited to see his first impressions and what he says when he realizes what it is. Now, as a full disclaimer, Kent did send me this bike to test out and review. However, that's not gonna influence us putting it through the paces over the next few months because if you guys follow my channel and my Instagram, you know that my son loves racing BMX, loves jumping his bikes, loves going fast, and he really puts the beating on some of his bikes. So we're gonna get this thing out of the box, see what kind of assemblies required on it. We're gonna do some size comparisons with him, let him check it out, let him ride it, see what he thinks. And then long term, over the next few months, I'm really excited to do a range test with it out on the bike trail because ultimately that's the main reason why we wanted to get him one of these bikes so that he could keep up with us on our electric bikes when we're out on the 20 and 30 mile trips. What is it? All right, guys, so we're gonna unbox this. I got my son here to help me today. You wanna open it up, bud? Yeah. I know how you like opening stuff. Hold on, I gotta start a time lapse. All right, you ready? Yeah. What? What is this thing? I don't know, what is it? A V-I-K-E. Did I get a new bike? I think maybe that's mine. What is it? A Kent. Kent what? Electric bike. For me? No, for did, me. Did you know you were getting one of these? No. You've been wanting one, didn't you? Yeah. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get into this. We're gonna get this thing out of the box real quick and see what kind of assembly is required. There's the seat and the seat post here. Let's see if we can get this thing out of the box. Got the bike here. The seat clamp is down in the box, so make sure you guys don't forget that. That was loose. We have two boxes here. I'm assuming one's a charger. 29.4 volt, 1.8 amp charger. So that's for the 24 volt battery here. This thing does run on a 24 volt lithium battery. It's a 5.2 amp hour battery with I believe 124 watt hours of current. So they estimate this bike to go about 15 miles on on a charge on low power. So we're gonna definitely be testing that out on the bike trail. Looks like there's one dot on the battery, so we'll have to charge this up before we try it out. But yeah, there it is there, 24 volt, 5.2 amp hour. Nice little battery. Really easy to carry a second one around. I did reach out to them to see if they were gonna be selling these batteries separately and they said they were working on it. So that'd be a great, great thing to see because I'd like to pick up another battery for sure. Good quality though. Nice uh, metal enclosure, plastic top, plastic bottom, but the whole, casing here is a nice little metal cylinder so i thought it would just be one a one gear yeah it's just like your other mountain bike huh yeah except with electric except with electric yeah you have a six speed micro shift so it has a twist shifter just like your other bike which is a really nice feature it's really easy for kids to use instead of the thumb shifter where you have to hit the button and then roll the thing this you just twist it forward and backward so that's really nice there so it looks like the only thing we need to install is the front handlebars and the front wheel and the pedals. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is install the handlebars. You'll need a five millimeter Allen wrench for this. Now, if you guys need a good, good uh, multi-tool, I really recommend this Vibrelli uh, multi-tool here. It's a, it has all different sizes and really good quality. I'll put a link to, to this below in the description as well. And you wanna make sure you get these started by hand first. You don't wanna cross thread them. So make sure you start them all by just with your fingers at first. So what do you think? You're going to jump this bike? Maybe. You're going to take it full speed? See how fast it'll go? Do a speed test with it? Maybe. <laughs> oh, I know you. So once you get your front wheel put on, you want to make sure you have the same gap on this side as this. And then you want to go ahead and tighten these nuts up. It's going to be a 15 millimeter. And when you prop your bike up, when you flip it over, if you prop it up like this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you put something under the end of the hand grip to keep the controller up off the ground slightly or loosen it and spin it so that it's not resting on that controller because you don't wanna break that. All right, so now that we got the front wheel installed, we're gonna go ahead and install the pedals. Now on the pedals, they are marked left and right and on the cranks, it is marked as well. So make sure you install it on the right side. The one on the right side is normal threads and the one on the left side is reverse threads, so just make sure you're aware of that. And then you tighten them up with a 15 millimeter. 
And the derailleur, I think, might be a little bent, maybe. Uh, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. We'll check it out. If it's bent, we'll try to unbend it. Only other thing we have to do is go over all the nuts and bolts, make sure everything's tight, and then just install the seat. All right, so then we just have to connect this front brake cable here, make sure everything's adjusted up good and not rubbing, and it'll almost be ready to ride. Except we gotta wait for the battery to charge up. Yeah, it only needs rubbing. You could just pedal it for now, try it out. Yeah. So we're gonna put some air in the tires here with the Tack Life portable cordless tire inflator. And now the next one. Perfect, 45 pounds. All right, we don't have a battery yet, but he's testing this it out. This thing is awesome. What's this thing doing? Whoa, this thing's crazy. You like it? Yeah. Does it have a lot of power? Yeah. And I found out a cheat to it. What? If if you don't use any of your power and just like turn the pedals, yeah. it will still go like you're just using throttle. Oh, so like like fake pedal it? Yeah, pretty much. And it then it gives it good throttle? Yeah. All right, all right, let's see what that baby got. I was barely even putting any effort or whatever into that to now make it turn up the motor hill. off and try it. Okay. Now I could barely do it. Did you kick the motor on? Now this is the motor on. What do you think? Pretty awesome? Yeah. All right. What's your favorite thing about it? Hmm, maybe the power modes. Oh, which one do you like it? Either medium or high. Oh, I figured, because you're a speed racer. Sometimes low, if you were <laughs> just riding around. What do you think? You think you're excited to try it on the bike trail? Yeah. All right. If there was... If this was just a regular bike and trying to pedal it, it would be pretty hard. But with this, this is just the motor. I like doing nothing, but... How's that suspension? Good. Want to try it off some jumps? Like off some curbs. All right. All right guys, so we got the battery charged up. We're over here, he's riding it around. We're gonna let him tell you a little bit about the bike, what he thinks of it. And this is solely his opinion, so you're gonna get a child's view of the bike. And then we're gonna go over some measurements of how tall he is and how tall the rider is supposed to be for one of these bikes. But let's go ahead and get into his opinion. There's five things I like about this bike. One is, it would be nice if you, lived around a hilly area and you didn't have like that much to ride except you only had a little place because like it helps you out a lot you still get like pedaling and exercise in if you just had a hilly area or whatever and you were in like pas2 or something here's the second thing i like about it the suspension like i feel like the suspension is like more than my truck pre-caliper and you could go check that video out in the link my dad put will put that down there and then i feel like this like if i go off this curb like the when my front tire went off i barely felt anything like just a little bit so that's the second thing i like about it here's the third thing the PAS, so like, 
whenever you go in low mode, you could kind of feel it kick in. When you kick it up to medium, you just go from a little, and then you know this bike's electric because it like helps you out a bunch. And then high mode, you just blast off with that. Like, I'll kick it up to high mode, right down here. This is high mode. You just like, and I could go like at least 20 mile per hour on my truck pre-caliper. And then this thing, whenever you put it into high, I could probably at least get up to maybe around 19 on flat easy. All right guys, so I have no idea what he was saying because I couldn't hear him, but hopefully he talked about the bike and what he liked about it. I'll see when I edit this, but we're over here now and we're on this little incline here. He's gonna try to pedal up the hill without the motor on and then he's gonna kick it on and see how much that motor actually helps him out. Even though it's only a 180 watt motor, for his size and weight, this thing should power up through that, no problem. So he has the motor off there. The motor still off? Yeah. All right, so that was with the motor off. So here's the motor off. I'm gonna kick it on. Now it's on low mode. So halfway up this hill, I'll kick it on high mode, or medium then high. And then you could just sit down. Like, high mode, you could just sit down and it'll do anything for you up hills. Like, it's like so crazy. So I'm gonna see if I could get up this big grass hill. I think so, because it's not that hard right now. The motor was dying down a little bit, but I still made it up. So that last time was gear two PAS3. Now I'm gonna try gear one PAS3. We. All right guys, I'm back over home and it's safe to say that he loves the bike. So now I just wanna go over a couple dimensions on the bike and about my son, how tall he is, how tall your child should be to fit on this bike, and also a few other things that I think you guys should be aware of. So the first thing is in the user manual, it states in there that there's a positive and a negative button to go through your PAS levels, up or down, there is not. There's only one button. So that one button cycles through, low, medium, high, off, then back to low, medium, high. You cannot go from medium to low without cycling it all the way through. It's no big deal, just something to be aware of. And now even though this bike has some entry level components like the power speed derailleur, I haven't had any issues with that thing once I got it tuned in and the bike shifts perfectly, works smoothly even after him jumping off them curbs and putting a little bit of a beating on the bike. Now I did have to adjust the derailleur to get it to work perfectly at first, which is normal on any bike that has a shifter in gears. I'm no professional bike mechanic, but if you don't feel comfortable working on your own bikes, please take them to the bike shop, pay them a few bucks, have them go over your bike and get them to tune this thing in perfectly and you shouldn't have any issues. All right, so now my son, he's just a hair over four foot, one inches tall, and technically he's a little bit too small for this bike. When he stands over the bike, his inseam actually hits the top tube of the bike and he has to stand up on his tippy toes. But as you can see, he's an advanced rider. He got up on that thing and could ride it by himself, no problem, and he loves this thing. Now, in my opinion, I think it's the perfect choice for him because he's gonna grow into this bike really quick and he's gonna be able to ride this thing for many years to come. But they do state that you should have about one to two inches between your child's inseam and the top tube on that bike. And the top tube, the standover height is right around 20, five to 25 and a half inches. So now we're gonna go ahead and get into the minimum and maximum seat heights and go over a few measurements and specs for the bike. All right guys, so now the standover height on this bike right in front of the seat is about 24 inches. And then up here a little bit is about 25 and a half. So you have about 24 to 25 and a half inches right here. So that being your minimum standover height. Now your minimum seat height is about 27 and three quarters of an inch with the reflector installed. What we did was we just took this reflector off of here. I'm gonna figure out a different way to mount it. And that'll get you down just about another half inch or so. And that will put your minimum seat height right at about 
27 inches. Now the maximum seat height on most seat posts, there's a minimum insertion line on the seat post. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it on there. And the maximum seat height is right about 33 inches. Now I'm just under five foot eight. And when I sit on here, I'm exactly flat footed. And all I would have to do is rotate these handlebars forward just a bit. And this bike would actually be the perfect size for me. I'd, I could ride this thing no problem. And I know I didn't show it in this video, but I have done that. Maybe I'll show that in a future video, but it powers me around no problem. Even with the 180 watt motor on level ground, it powers me around. However, the only thing that would get me is if I go up hills, then I'm gonna have to put a lot of my own power into it because the 180 watt motor is a little bit underpowered for me going up those steep hills. But for my son, trust me, it goes up any hill that he would probably ever need to go up. Um, powers him right up it for the size and weight that he is. Now this thing has a power speed derailleur. Like I said, it's an entry level derailleur. It has a 24 volt, 5.2 amp hour battery that powers the 24 volt hub motor in the back. Now this is a class one e-bike, which means there is no throttle. So the motor's not gonna engage until you spin those pedals. As soon as you quit spinning those pedals, the motor will kick off. And it also has safety features built into the brake lever. So as soon as you pull the levers, no matter whether it be the front or the back, it's gonna cut power to that motor immediately as a safety feature. Now it has six speed gearing in the back with a six speed twist shifter. And it also has a entry level spring suspension on here. But in my son's opinion, he thinks that it's actually a little softer than his Trek bike. I believe it may actually have a little bit more travel. So I'm excited to get this thing out on the bike trail and we're gonna see what kind of distance we can go with it. So stick around if that's something that you guys are interested in seeing. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and that bell so you get notified when I post future videos and I would really appreciate it if you guys leave a comment below or any questions that you might have. It really helps my channel out a lot and don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Now I'll put an affiliate link down below in the description of this video for any of the tools I used such as the cordless tire inflator or the Vibrelli uh, multi-tool which are great tools to use along with all other e-bike accessories that I've used and tested on all my other bikes. So if you guys are interested in that please check that out and I will see you all around on the next one. Thanks for watching. Whew.